here we are, Professor Strowman. All right. Thank you for taking the time to sit with us. Um, we know that you're very active within the LGBT community and you're aware of all the issues that face us. What are some of the ones that are most important to you? I, I think the most important thing is for straight people to change the way they see themselves. Because I think we've changed a lot, but they haven't changed very much. And they still see themselves as normal, regular, and just, you know, neutral, objective, and just the way things are. And that's the, that's the biggest obstacle. Okay. I know that you are a very big activist within the group. Could you give us maybe some experiences that you've had, maybe some good, some not good? The, the most positive experience I've had is being part of that up. You know, there was a historical calamity, and um, people, my age group just started dying and nobody cared about it and you had a despised group of people with no rights who were facing you know terminal illness and through AIDS activism these people managed to join together and force this country to change against its will thereby saving each other's lives so to me that's really the most successful experience I've had in my entire life this shows that people without any rights who are treated with great disrespect can force a society to change. Like, have you had friends of yours that were, like, just passing away that would, that you were like... Oh, I know, I know hundreds of people who died of AIDS. It's my generation. It's the AIDS generation. And, you know, I, I, you know, coincidentally, I was working for a gay newspaper and I was covering City Hall pretty much when AIDS started. So I covered very early events in the AIDS crisis um, as a reporter. So I've actually had the, I would say, both the privilege and the burden of witnessing the entirety of the AIDS crisis from the beginning till now. And most people who were on it very early died. So there's very few people who've really seen the entire arc of it as mm -hmm. I have. So, you know, it's... I, it's been the, it's the story of my life in some sense. I mean, ni AIDS started in 1981 or two, 23, when AIDS started. The first person About our age. Yeah. yeah, the first person I knew who died of AIDS, I was 23. Yeah. So I've, now I'm 51, so I spent my entire adult life with this. As far as the community on campus goes, do you feel like we're adequately represented on campus? I think being a gay student at CSI is hell. Total hell. I think it's one of the worst. It's the two student populations that are the worst treated in this school are LGBT students and Muslim students. These are the two groups that are students have to sit in class and listen to incredibly defamatory statements from other students, idiocy from teachers, no integration into the curriculum, no services. Staten Island is a terrible place to be gay. I just I the this school is so far behind. The, the, the national or the city average for what you, an institution will provide for queer students. It's shocking. You, don't, you also don't feel like we're not, we're not visible enough on campus? Well, I've been, I've been here for 11 years. Since the day I came, I have been suggesting that we take a group photo of queer students and faculty in front of the library. And, you know, just to have everyone who's out on campus and post it so that we're out. Right. And it's never happened. You know, I just, people, I mean, I'm out, Matt Brim is out, Terry Rowden is out, and like a, three people in sociology. You know, there's like, and a couple of other people, like 10 out professors, but unless you have them as professors, you don't know that they're out. Right. So there's no visibility. There should be some kind of visibility action on the campus. So you do feel that a lot more could be done to oh change things? I think it's a terrible place for gay students. And do you think that... With the classes that you've taught and the, the students you've had, do you find that a lot of students on Staten Island are very unaware of not only the, who their peers are, but what issues face the LGBT community? Staten Island, students on Staten Island are unaware, period. It's not just about LGBT <laughs> people. They don't know what's going on. It's like its own little isolation tank. And the thing is, if you're a dominant culture person, that's fine. You can, you know, get high and drink beer and drive drunk and do whatever. <laughs> but if you are a person who has any kind of creativity, or you have, or you're a person of color, or you're not a Christian, or you're gay, or you're an artist, it's just like a horror, it's like a trap. It's like a prison. You know, and, you know, we try. I mean, the teachers here who, the faculty who have something going on really try to, like, 
identify the students who we think need us and reach out to them in some way. But we can't compensate for, for what it's like to grow up here. We're just wondering what you're up to now as far as your activism work goes and are you writing anything new? Yeah, I'm involved in some really big, I'm about to go to Palestine and um, meet with gay and lesbian Palestinians in the West Bank. Wow. Ooh. I'm going on uh, March 31st. It's a huge trip because I am part of a community of Jews who support Palestinian rights. And so um, I decided to make this. It's called a solidarity visit. Wow. So that's what, that's my next my next big step. That's awesome. Yeah. And you're still working on the ACT UP oral history? Uh, yes. Uh, my collaborator, Jim Hubbard, and I, we've been collaborators for 24 years. We've been on this project for nine years. We've interviewed 112 surviving members of ACT UP New York, and we intend to interview at least another 50 or 70 more. That's so cool. When you do your book signings in Manhattan, mm -hmm. And then you go out into other places into the country. How are you treated any differently from city to city? Yeah, it really depends. Like, if I read and say, you know, cities have their own gay character and also they have their own intellectual character. So, for example, San Francisco is a, not a huge. It's the it's the freest place in America for queer people, especially for trans people. Uh, it's also a very intellectual city. It's a very book oriented city. And writers are treated very well there. So when I do a reading there, I get like a big audience, and everyone's very interested. They ask very interesting questions. You go to LA, where nobody reads, and everybody's into you know show business. You get like six people at your reading. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I mean, I did do the West Hollywood Book Fair this year, and they, that was a good sized audience because that's like a whole city takes over and has a big book fair. But it's not like a book friendly place. I did a reading uh, in Chicago recently that was standing room. And it was really great. Wow. It was on this book about familial homophobia, and people were very, very interested. But you never know, because I've had books translated into other, other languages, and I've gone to uh, many other countries, Japan, Spain, you name it, and you never know when you get there what's going to happen, who, how you're going to be treated. Sometimes you go to a country, and they're like, they put you on television, and you're in the big newspaper, and then you go, sometimes you go there, and there's like three people, because they live in fear, or it's very marginalized. You know. I want to say something else about Stand CSI. Up. It's okay. not just gay people here who have troubles. Women, female students, a lot of the culture of Staten Island does not value women getting educated, especially Italian-American women. I often have Italian-American female students who are really smart, and no one is pushing them to achieve. No, you know, like a student will come in and say, what do you think I should do for you? I say, what are you going to do? What, you know, what are you going to do after you get out of here? I thought I'd be a grade school teacher. I'm like, you're so smart. Why do you want to be a grade school teacher? What's your GPA? 3.98? I mean, this is a kid who could get into any graduate school, law school, scholarship. No one is encouraging them to advance. I find that just in general, a lot of the you know female students have a really tougher time here. It's, it's just backwards in, in, in so many <laughs> ways. It, like, that's why I call it satanic island. It really is. Yeah. It really is. I'm not even going to disagree with that. <laughs> Simon sucks. But that's why bringing Matt Brim here was so important. You know, it really has changed everything that he's come here and that he's teaching those classes because it creates a more public conversation. A lot of the professors are too embarrassed to teach gay and lesbian stuff. They don't know how to teach it, you know, and so the student picks that up in class, you know. So to have someone teaching queer studies is just like an incredible it's Because they would feel uncomfortable or? Well, not every straight someone. person. Well, no, no, I'm not just trying to generalize. There, so. there, is, there is one straight teacher here, Dalia Candioti, who teaches gay and lesbian content in a way that she, she has worked out all her shit, and she teaches it in an integrated way. And there's, in our department, there's a couple people in sociology also who can do that. But, you know, these people have to work on themselves to be able to do mm -hmm. that. Most of them, if they have any content at all, they stick it in in some kind of embarrassing, tokenized way. It's not an integrated into the curriculum. I'm Andrew Oppenheimer, and I'm straight. What groups or uh, publications on campus are you a part of? I'm currently involved with Third Rail and Serpentine Magazine, but I've also been publishing the banner, and I'm working on contributions for several others as well. What LGBT-friendly groups at CSR are you aware of? Um, specifically, obviously, the GSA, or whatever name it's going under now. It used to be many more letters. Do you feel that our GSA is anywhere near what it should be? I really am not informed about the GSA. I know that it exists, 
but I've never been to a meeting. Any before. queer studies classes or organizations other than the GSA and queer studies, and do you feel like they're um, open enough? Well, on this campus or in general? On this campus. Um, to be honest, I haven't really noticed the queer community being very active on this campus. Aside from specific members of the GSA, there are very few people that are not only open about their sexuality, but also active in trying to get, uh, I guess, equality on this campus for it. There are very few people who are as vocal as they really should be. Um, yes, I do think my life would be easier if I was straight, just because um, society is more accepting of you know, straight people. <laughs> Uh, and you know you don't have to hide who you are and it's e easier. I don't consciously try to hide who I am at all I just am who I am and I don't know everyone says they can't tell anyway so I guess I don't really have to hide it As being uh, my peers pretty much treat me the same way like it's funny like they'll all be like oh I'm so sorry I said this like before they found out or whatever but uh, hold on but um like I honestly don't care like it doesn't bother me like it, like whatever said joking around, like I joke around with people the same way, so it's not like a big deal. I, to me. When I, used to I just them. um. So they're supportive. Yeah, I guess so. Like no, no one stopped being my friend. Like actually, everyone always says like they feel closer to me. I'm not really open with my sexuality, like around my family, but I like some of them, I guess. Uh, but I don't like like go out of my way to hide it. Like I don't know. Hi, my name is Brennan Modest. I'm the vice president of the GSA, the Gay Street Alliance, and I'm gay. I'm 18 years old. Um, how do you feel about what is being done um, to see that the LGBT community obtains their rights as Americans and as human beings? Do you feel that enough is being done, or do you feel that we need to do more? I think we need to do more. As a community, we need to do a lot more as well. We need to participate in a lot more, because I know that some of our community doesn't really care about our politics. And we also need to show that we care so that the politicians care more. To be honest, it's kind of difficult because few, most groups have not actively voiced uh, how they feel towards the LGBT community. It's hard to say which groups are friendly. And even then, when, within each group, not everyone in the group will necessarily agree depending on the organization. Like I know that say like Delta Delta or whatever the Christian club is calling themselves now, probably would have very mixed feelings, depending on whom you ask. I'm Andrea, and I like math. <laughs> um, I'm part of Chi Alpha Christian Fellowship. Okay, anything else? Uh, well, I'm a peer educator with the Wellness Center downstairs. So. Okay. What LGBT friendly groups at TSI are you aware of? Well, the GSA. GSA? What LGBT issues are you aware of? Um, most recently, uh, if memory serves, there were a couple of issues that came up uh, obviously gay marriage, but it also within issues of adoption in a few other states as well. I remember uh, reading not too long ago, I think it was in Huffington Post, I can't remember, uh, about a gay couple that was not allowed to adopt because the state was worried about spreading homosexuality to the child as though it were some sort of disease. Do you know what state that was? I can't remember offhand. Probably Texas with all the stupid the shit. Issue they of gay marriage, gay adoption. I'm aware of that, yeah. And, and the adoption, yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that? I am a Christian, so I don't believe in gay marriage. Okay. Um, I support gay people, though, and I, I love them. I have plenty of gay friends, but they understand my stance on gay marriage, so that's why I don't mind telling the truth in this room full of people. <laughs> But no, that's fine. We're not we're not uh, judging you. This is we're not trying to lead you on. Uh, my name is Mike, and I'm a straight, a uh, straight um, guy. All right. Do you go to CSI? Yes. I d are you a, a part of any of the groups on campus at all? No, not right now. I actually just started this semester. Are you aware uh, of any of the issues facing the LGBT community? There's the marriage issue, and then the issue of, of raising kids with a man and man and woman and woman, which isn't really a, a, an issue. But you know, those are just some of the things that people bring up sometimes. So that that I am aware of. What about homophobia. Homophobia, I honestly don't really think that 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 is an actual phobia. I mean, <laughs> I I think it's just a term that we've adopted in society, like a slang term. I don't really think that you could. There's a, a documentation on people who have suffered from homophobia. Um, I think there are many people that 
that are have some of their own issues inside that that they're afraid of of coming out with that forces them to kind of put on this this uh this facade of like no no not me I can't uh, no that's gay don't get away from me you know and and because maybe some of those people not all but some of those people are actually trying to cover up for something that they might be hiding in the closet about yeah. that's just my opinion so. well, I think um, well there's a lot of homophobia going around people discriminate against others just because they're gay straight or you know that's gay. And there's a lot of hate crimes. I know the literal meaning of homophobia is meaning that you're scared of homos. <laughs> but my definition is when you treat or discriminate against the LGBT community because that's just not cool. <laughs> We're all people. Touching on homophobia, I don't think as it, a phobia it doesn't work, but as something that you could give off to the gay community, I think that. Oh, I've, yeah, okay. You're. I agree with that, but, you know... Because there's people that are affected by homophobia, and there's people that give off I think that. more people are affected by homophobia than the people who are homophobic are affected by being homophobic, which, again, is, is nonsense to me. It's like arachnophobia or, or something like that is, is a little more being afraid of spiders. Being, being afraid of somebody who has a certain sexual preference is just pretty silly to me. Um, honestly, I believe that any family structure, any kind of uh, family unit, should have a right to exist, regardless of what the genders of anyone involved are. If a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, want to get married, I see no problem with that. I see no reason why they shouldn't be allowed to adopt, or however else, if they, if they uh, want to do through artificial insemination. Do you know which states have legal gay marriage? No. I think Vermont was in there. Jersey. Washington is recent. Oh, Jersey's in there too now? Awesome, that's even better. Yeah, but uh, did you know that a person has to live in any of these states for five years in order to get married? They have to be a citizen of the state. Do heterosexual people have to live in a state for five years to get married there? Well, they have to be older than five. Well, <laughs> I'm fairly certain that's a general rule of thumb for most countries in the world. How do you feel about that? I think it's terrible. It works out pretty much the same way that literacy tests worked out for the sake of voting. Where, aside from being irrelevant, it's something entirely superfluous just to detain and set up a double standard. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like the fact that anyone can be told that they have to live somewhere to get married. It, if, if, say, a straight couple goes to Vegas they get drunk, get married, or rather they go there with the intention of getting married, the guy accidentally ends up marrying a prostitute that's there at the same time. There's no legal ramifications for it. There's no ramification, uh, rather there's no law stating that they have to have lived in Nevada for an extended period of time for this to happen. Why should it be any different just because it's the same sex? I feel everyone's a person, so it really doesn't matter what your sexual orientation is. But uh, yeah, I feel like gay people can get married. Doesn't has nothing to do. I, that's cool with me. I'm cool with it. Doesn't matter to me. Do you feel that our society is progressing, regressing, or stagnant in terms of LGBT issues? As far as America goes, I feel we're somewhat stagnant because for every state that has some sort of progress, there's another one, usually Texas, that sets it back even further. Why do you think so? To be perfectly honest, I think it's because we have too much division within our country itself. We have too many people trying to fight for control and trying to use the stupidity of the masses to their gain. Because of that, people are being educated, much in the same way that Adolf Hitler edu educated people, that there is some sort of organization that is out to get you. Now, in middle America and more towards the south, it's generally anyone that is not a wasp. However, the gay community has become one of the bigger targets over the past 20 years or so for, uh, if nothing else, I feel just because they've been getting more exposure in the other states. So anything that's getting exposure in the other states that is that different seems like it's going to be the easiest target for the South, I'd imagine. And aside from 
all that, I suppose that they just feel like they need someone to hate. So I definitely think that every kind of legislation needs to have more effort and more work. Just in the gay community, we need to have more and more work because we're kind of double back, you know what I mean? We're like already one step back, we just need to keep going. We need a better system of feeling that we're actually secure. We need a good, you know, like law background to help us out even more than we kind of already are, but it needs to be strong. We need more. I don't want to seem needy, but we do need a lot more changes so our community does get the same respect as other communities do. If there was an LGBTQ center on campus, uh, would you support the opening of it? Yes. Would you support the opening of one? Um, well, and this goes back into the fact of, that I am a Christian and okay. I can't support sin. So seeing as I see that as sin, I can't really support it. Would you support that? Yeah. Would you utilize it? I have no real reason to, but at the same time, I would still endorse it. And as a member of this magazine, I would plug the fuck out of it. Make sure that everyone knows, everyone that has a reason to go there, the same way that anyone who has a reason to go to any other specialized office. Make sure that they know it's there, that they know how to get there, and they know that they are Actually, accepted. you know, I, I, I'm a straight male. I, unless they serve pizza there, I, I wouldn't really, <laughs> you know, I, I don't think I would really have, need to utilize. They do serve pizza. They do serve pizza, then I will utilize it. <laughs> I don't think many places are. I saw, you know, there are there are certain places, but people just don't know enough about. There's it. a lot of ignorance out there in, in terms of in terms of discrimination against uh, many people, not just uh, gay and lesbian people, but all types of people. Yeah, and I think overall intolerance for for the uh, the gay and lesbian. Uh, Community mostly by by younger people, but I, I do see a lot of a lot of older people who who also feel that way, and yeah. So so I would say that it really depends where you go, but um, I, I would say yes, Staten Island is is a safer place than let's say going to a place like Texas or or you know what I mean, like some of those places. <laughs> yes, but I think that until more people are educated. And, and come to understand really everything about the gay and lesbian, and transgender, bisexual community, that, um, that there will always be um, some issues with, uh, in I'm terms sorry. of safety. When we marched, we had, Brim and I did, we did a, tried to do a CSI contingent in the Gay Pride March. Dan was the only student that showed up. It was me, Brim, and Dan, which is Biggest benefit. Why don't you do that? Why don't you get together a GSA contingent and get the faculty to come and everyone to come? We'll have a big contingent. We'll march in Gay Pride. They I went just to jail walk. five years in a row trying to march in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Because the St. Patrick's Day Parade to this day will not allow a gay contingent in that parade. Because it's a Christian. It's a Catholic it's thing. It's a Catholic thing. And yeah. for five years, the Irish gay group tried to march, and I would march with them. And in five years, we got arrested. Went I don't handcuffs. Watch to jail for trying to march in the St. Patrick's Day parade. I, of every background, every religion, there are gay people. And you should not stop us from being seen in our community. But also, when you stand there, you know, I'm an upstanding student, <laughs> and they're putting handcuffs on me and putting me in the... For trying to just march in a parade. Because they're so sick with prejudice that they think that we're so dangerous, they have to put us in handcuffs. You just think, wow. So this is so twisted. You know, because actually what we're doing is positive. We're trying to make things better. Mm -hmm. You know, but then the Irish gay people gave up. So now that that parade goes on, nobody protests it. But that's well, hopefully it'll change. You know, hopefully it'll change soon. It's, it's so ridiculous. You know, it's ridiculous. But it's a religious thing. That's that's really what it is. Yeah, but actually, if they use city money, so that actually they shouldn't. It's because of the power of the Catholic Church in the city. It's the power of the Catholic Church anywhere. You know, I'm one of the people who disrupted mass. <laughs> it's one of the, so yeah. I, I'm, I'm not afraid to sing out of the Catholic Church when necessary. No, I was not. That was, but I found that interesting since I'm going to be going there in the summer. So. Really? It's uh, Do you know what it is? Or? No. <laughs> it's basically this bill that was recently passed that if so, if you're harboring, if you know that someone's gay and you don't come forward, you will be arrested. How do you feel about that? I don't 
think that's right. <laughs> you shouldn't persecute anybody for what they're doing. I don't agree with homosexuality, like I said before. Mm -hmm. um, the word of God tells me that it's a sin, and I believe that wholeheartedly, but I love gay people because the Lord says to love everyone, and so that includes everyone. So nobody should make anything into law that hates on anyone. So What I had read about it, because remember, most of the news sites that uh, we have in America were very uh, careful about what they uh, went about it through. I do remember, I think it was Uganda, that the Pope had recently also gone to and did not talk at all about the bill. He went out of his way to mention everything else. Usually, if there's something large like that where it permits literally the murder of someone just for what they believe in, it's something large, that, uh, large enough for any religious official to talk about, especially if it's like the once in every 10 years that you're going to go to this country to talk to them. It's really all that I remember about it, but it did bother me to hear that uh, in relatively civilized countries, and I say relatively civilized because no country is truly civilized, that this is still happening. Makes no sense to me. Would you support a queer studies course? If there's people who want to learn about that subject, then yeah, you know, they should be able to. Would you ever consider taking a queer studies class? Oh, if if it's just something that's offered, yeah. I mean, you know, why not? I think that yeah. anyway, I could educate myself. That will help me um, better interact with with people and help me better understand what other people are going through. Right. Yes. Would you ever take a queer studies class? If I wasn't about to graduate, I'd be interested. Uh, mm, I don't know. Depends. <laughs> well, elaborate. What do you mean? Depends on, I don't know, depends on what they would be covering in the class and if it was something that I was interested in learning more about. Let's okay. see, we're taking queer study. This is what this project is for. Right. And mostly we learned about history of homosexuality in society. And we've recently done activism, uh, homosexual activism, AIDS. Activism. Would you be interested in learning anything about it? Why not? <laughs> yeah, you seem pretty open-minded. How would you feel about a uh, queer studies class as an education, a general education requirement, such as you know, like PED 190 and uh, e English 151? I feel that if a queer studies course was offered, it should be uh, emphasized more through the pluralism and diversity thing. It's already a requirement that way. I don't see why it shouldn't be pushed a little bit further in there as opposed to taking a class about illegal Mexican immigrants hopping over the fence. To be honest, it seems like it would just be an additional class that nobody would pay attention to. I hate to say it like that, but it wouldn't help the situation. It's the same way that anyone who's required to take a science class, because most uh, degrees in this college require two sciences, regardless of what your degree is. Students don't care about what they're doing, they're just sitting through it and dealing with it half the time they're making fun of it or developing a distaste for it down the line. I don't feel that it would benefit uh, anyone if that class was required. I feel like it should be it's emphasized. really pushed towards with the pluralism and diversity option, since it's already there. But at the same time, I don't feel like if it was required, it would benefit anybody. Like a general education requirement? Yes. Um, I don't think that's fair because some people might not want to take that course, so to make it a general education requirement would have to force people who maybe don't want to learn anything about the subject to take it. So it wouldn't be right to students who maybe um, either already know about that subject and know, don't want to know more or don't know anything about it and just don't want to know more. I think that it would, it would definitely, it would be good because it would, it would help some people who are really struggling with, with coming out and it would it would and it would help um, them and it would help their friends and their peers and people around them understand what what they're going through and make it a lot easier for them to to come out however I'm, I'm kind of divided on that because I, I also feel like that would be in a way forcing that issue on, on, on everybody when there are so many other issues out there just besides the the gay and, and lesbian or LGBT, the the whole all encompassing aspect of that. Uh, there are so, but there are so many different things that we could have required classes about. I, I feel like having one about that. I'm kind of divided on that. I, re I really, it it has many pros, but it, there's also many cons. Do you feel that there's a difference between the way that gay and lesbian are treated versus bi and trans? 
Well, I, I think there are some subtle differences in, in, all of, in all of them. I mean, for example, I could be wrong, but I, I know that a lot of guys like <laughs> prefer seeing les you know two lesbians together than over over two guys together. For but bisexual people, I've I've heard a lot of a lot of people, even my own family, say like, "Oh, I don't I don't agree with that. You can't go both ways." Or saying things like, "That's not fair." <laughs> We've been called greedy. We well, have been called co greedy. Come on, that's. Uh, topic that I actually have a, a female friend who's going to get a complete sex change you know and that is definitely looked at differently than gay and lesbian I mean they're all discriminated against but but definitely the transgender idea is is definitely seems bizarre to a lot of people that I've encountered oh do you think CSI is a good pl is a safe place for LGBT students to be out certain places I feel that, say, the campus center, as a better example, is more safe than most other places. But that's only because this is the hub of student activity. Since we're sitting in it right now, and this is where all the publications are, this is where the club offices are, this is where the GSA actually has their meetings as well. Not this room, obviously. But this building, because it has all these active students who actually care, and take the time to find out what it is that they should be caring about. This building is safe. I'd imagine it works out the same for the library and 1P. For other buildings, I can't vouch. And I know that there are a lot of very closed-minded individuals on this campus, a lot of people who are just very blatantly, uh, among other things, homophobic. And it seems like, depending on if these people are gathering in numbers, then it would not be a safe place for anyone in the LGBT community? I definitely think so. I mean, I don't have a problem walking around showing that I'm gay. I know a lot of people who walk around, they're, they're just out with it, so I think so. I haven't heard of any issues with anybody having a problem with somebody who was gay or lesbian, and you know, I haven't heard anything like that, so I would assume that it would be, otherwise you would hear more about some type of issue going on with that. Would you ever join an activist organization? Depends on the organization on how active they are and what they do. I would never join a militantly activist organization. There are, there are certain issues that I would definitely want to pursue in, in terms of that. Yeah, probably. Oh, what kind of activism would you be interested um, in? Probably pro-life. Pro-life? Well, I haven't actually thought of it, but I would. Would you make your own? I would make my own. And what would you do in your activism group? Well, I would definitely aware everybody about the certain politics that's going on, like proper eight and a whole bunch of laws that are going on. And we would go to like rallies and stuff. Maybe some positive stepping? Yeah, stepping, I love stepping. Nice. <laughs> the GSA and the Gay Straight Alliance is every Wednesdays at 2.30 in building 2N at 108. And you can come even if you're straight, because it's the Gay Straight Alliance. <laughs> so, I'll see you soon. <laughs> Are you aware of the size of the LGBT community on CSI campus? I'm actually not. We have the Gay Straight Alliance, and that's only a select people that come because it's during club hours. And I hear that there are a lot more. I don't know the whole entire CSI's LGBT community. I actually was not aware that there was a, a solid community. Uh, definitely, here. CSI has a lot of gays out here, or straights, LGBT. And I, I want to meet everybody. Well, so, do you think that there are any more ways yeah. that we could make the LGBT uh, community more visible on our campus? Definitely. We can get our own like LGBTQ center on campus as well. We can do field days to come support your fellow community and stuff like that. Definitely think that's a good thing. Do you feel that a lot of students on campus... What is your opinion on gay celebrities? And do you think they're doing what, enough to help them like, get the cause going? Or? Well, I know some gay celebrities who do that, like Lady Gaga, she actually went to the Washington March in D.C. and she did a speech. I'm not saying that every gay celebrity is because, like, Adam Lambert, he's just doing him, all right? <laughs> but definitely, we need more gay celebrities to raise awareness. How do you feel about Wendy Williams? I love Wendy. Let me tell you, <laughs> that is my homegirl. All right, I made up a dance just for her too. You wanna do it? Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> it's just basically a hundred.
Come on, Saba. You say it in another language. <laughs> nice. That's, I love it. But definitely, Wendy, she's like in love with us, so I'm in love with her again. Um, do you think that knowledge and awareness should be taught in the lower levels of school, starting maybe in elementary school? I think knowledge and, and awareness of of anything can can really open your mind. Have you uh, give people a more civilized and okay. understanding view of and, and areas of society that are discriminated against? Education and, and understanding is so important in in the way um, it, it it changes the way we we uh, we interact and in, in the way we um, we are towards our fellow man or woman. <laughs> I think queer studies should be required for every student in the school. Right, it should be part of what learning is. Yeah. And I remember when I was four years old in 1962, my nursery school teacher was getting married. So she decided to have us enact a mock wedding. And she made us all pair up in male-female couples. We were four. And marched down the aisle. And I refused. I said I would be the photographer. And I ran around the wedding going like this. Because <laughs> already I knew something. Like, that was not for me. But, like, no one should be doing that to four-year-olds. Yeah. <laughs> It's pushing the straight thinking into the yeah. mind of a child. Should yeah. queer studies be taught in the lower levels? Should it be taught in junior high? Should it be taught in grade of school? Of course. It should be taught in nursery school. I think it should <laughs> first start at home. Is like yeah, the, how problem is the problem is the problem. School is the corrective. You know. It's unfortunate, but the If we really is, believe, as I do, that, that being gay or trans or bisexual is a, it's a normal human variant. It's just a way of being a person. Then that, uh, that message should be out there from the second you're born. Mm -hmm. from the, when you're three years old and you're in daycare, <laughs> that should be the message, you know, from the beginning. And people would have much better lives if that was the case. There you go. That's a great one.